Ken Trahan, Sports Noah TV, and these are good times, better times certainly for your New Orleans Pelicans who have tied a season-long win streak of three consecutive wins heading into their game tonight in just a little while against Houston, and they did it by taking care of the Milwaukee Bucks early on. Bucks getting some good things done. The Greek Freak obviously is a talented player, but they held him down in this game, and the Pelicans pretty much got what they wanted. Second half, they were awesome in this game, Brian. They did basically whatever they wanted offensively. They've been playing better defense, and they're spreading the ball around, and the Bucks stopped there that night. Okay, I've heard that one before somewhere. Ricky, <laughs> the other thing about the Pelicans, they're scoring at a high rate, but that's why. They're sharing the ball, making the extra pass, playing unselfishly. Look at this. And getting the open look, and that guy just isn't missing. Oh, uh, you can see that Bayern and Ten coach philosophy feel a lot better. I mean, the first part of the year, they're getting to know each other, everybody getting the buzz. You can see coming down the stretch, these guys playing together. And that's the only way they can win, playing together. You see the good, the good teams like Golden State and all those teams, those teams passing the ball, and they're playing together. Each win in this streak by 15 points or more. Right. First time that's happened since 2008. By the way, they were real good that year. 17 made three-pointers against the Bucks. That's a franchise right. record. And they got the Rockets and Kings coming in, two teams that are ahead of them in the West, Brian. So these are very important games. 3-0, three, oh, uh, three-game winning streak, four games at home. And just as we talked about last week, of this eight-game winning streak, they we figure, what, six wins at the very least, seven and one would be a great. Winning them all would be great. And, Ricky, they average 104 a game, and they've held their last three opponents, ironically, to 99 points each, all three games. Yeah have been 99 points by the opposition. So hold them under 100, you're going to win. Yeah, and they, and, they, and they, got, they got good defense. All they got to do is, uh, you know, you can see that Davis, he's the key to everything right. that's going to happen. He played great defense. Uh, the Pelicans got a chance to win. One of the, the things they did, Brian, was they did, resisted the temptation of moving Drew Holiday back into the starting lineup when Eric Gordon got hurt. They inserted Norris Cole, kept Holiday with that potent bench with Ryan Anderson. You get those two coming in together. That's as good a bench as there is in the league. You know, it's all about getting a comfortable rotation, and these guys are feeling it. You know, they lose Eric Gordon for four to six weeks with that broken ring finger. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with that. If they continue to play well without Eric Gordon, we know where that's going. But I tell you what, it takes a lot, right? Uh, Anderson, for him to take coming off the bench, because he's, he, he's yeah. I think he's better than anybody on the right. team beside Davis. So, you know, and that shows you that he's willing to work with the team. He's played great. I really think he's having his best season overall this year and of course a big game against Houston coming up shortly here at Smoothie King Center. You can read about it at sportsnoah.com. I'll be there covering and it's going to be a very important game for the Pelicans. As for Dwight Howard, we'll see. He missed their last game last night with a sprained ankle so we'll watch and see what transpires there. By the way, they won without him. As for college basketball, interesting times as always and LSU now 12 and 7. They had a big road win at Alabama. On Saturday, beat Avery Johnson's team 72 to 70. First time they've won at Tuscaloosa since 2004. Now they get Georgia on Tuesday, a winnable game. And then the big one against previous number one Oklahoma on national television coming up Saturday from the PMAC. Tulane struggling, three game losing streak. And they get South Florida coming up Wednesday, then Saturday at Tulsa. UNO at 5 and 12. They've lost five straight games ever since they started playing. You know, the tougher opposition, it's gotten a little bit more difficult for them. And they're home tonight against Central Arkansas. So, again, we hang our hat on LSU here, Brian, in terms of postseason play. Yeah, Kenny, it's hard to talk about Tulane and UNO right now compared to comparable to uh, LSU. And the way LSU played, it's almost, I, I watched the Alabama game, uh, and they won almost in spite of themselves. Avery Johnson, you know, he's got his team at a nice pitch, but they're not, they're not ready yet. LSU has got to play much better ball still to get in the NC two A's. Right now, they're still not they're not there yet. And I, I wonder, you know, <clears throat> I know Ben Simmons is a number one draft pick. He's a lottery pick for sure. He's the the number one. Yeah, pick. the number one. But I'll tell you what, I, I still he doesn't have an, a perimeter shot. But I'll tell you what, no one knows basketball better than him right now. He's an outstanding passer. He makes everybody around him better. But sometimes he's a little disinterested for me, Kenny and I think it reflects on the way he plays throughout a, a course of a game. He's not disinterested. He's too unselfish. And by the way, he can shoot. He just is choosing not to shoot from the perimeter. Anyone that saw him at the Alario Center last year knows he can shoot the ball. He's just choosing not to do so. Ricky, that's an element of his game that will come later. 
And that's what players do. They develop more and more skill as time well, progresses. Well, Ken, don't look like the coach is giving him the free range to do the things that he want to do. Oh, well, I don't know see. about that. I think they are. I, mean, I just I think he's just choosing man, not just to. Just like, like dribbling the ball up and down the yeah. court and stuff. I mean, he can do all this. He, he's a LeBron James out on the court. Right. I mean, and, and a lot of times he's passing the ball. He's not dribbling the ball down at all, Harley. He's going to set up and try to get the ball. But a lot of these balls, when he get rebounds, he need to take that ball down and score and help his team win or, or find somebody who open and pass the ball. That's the kind of game he need to play, like he's going to play when he get to the NBA. He's got the point guard mentality of right. getting everybody else involved. And look at the games and look at the shot chart. He takes more shots in the second half in every game than he does in the first half. And that's because he has the point guard mentality. He wants to get everyone else involved first before he tries to get his. And that's great, but they need him to score. When he scores 20 or more, they win. It's that simple. When he doesn't, they lose. So they need his scoring. He's got to take more shots. I agree. And there's something to be said about his unselfishness. I think that's a tremendous trait to have. But on, on this case, he's this, this one year at LSU, he needs to step up and take control more so, especially in crunch time. Right. And, and I think it's just like we're saying about the Pelican. They got to win another nine games for uh, ten games for him to get in. And, and yeah, their in. RPI isn't all that good right now. Yeah, but here's you know, their opportunity. Oklahoma, Oklahoma coming in Saturday. Yeah. If they have a win over Oklahoma and a win over Kentucky and they win 18 or more games, they're in. It's that simple based on RPI and significant wins. So we'll see how that pans out. Big game coming up, yeah. but first Georgia. Back to talk about Premier Nissan when we continue on Sports NOLA TV.